Hi, everybody. Uh, 430 on what has been and uh, what will continue to be this evening. Just a beautiful Halloween. Hope you're enjoying it. A year ago, it rained an inch on Halloween. Today, obviously, we're completely dry. Most areas still reporting partly cloudy skies. Daytime highs have made it up to 60. It's going to be a nice evening for your trick or treaters. It still looks like the clouds will thicken up tonight and actually hold overnight lows for much of the valley in the mid 40s. So we are done with those cold nights. And the focus now entirely changes to rainy weather starting Wednesday, potentially in the morning, and staying with us all the way to the first part of next week. We literally have a week, Wednesday through Tuesday of next week, of rainy days. The possible exception being maybe an absolute dry period Friday morning before rain picks up later in the day on Friday. So I'm beginning with the uh, homepage from the National Weather Service. And uh, they're on board with some heavy rain coming, heavy rain on the way. What can you expect? They talk about rain beginning tomorrow, Wednesday. There's two waves of heavier rain that we're tracking. They mentioned one of them here, Wednesday night into Thursday. And then the second heavier rain they mentioned here as well, coming in Friday evening or Friday p.m. into the day Saturday. And of course, they remind folks it's a great time to clean out the leaves around your street gutters so we can get the rain down and draining away. This is uh, their watch warning map. We're not under any watches warnings, but they have put out what they call a hydrologic outlook. So uh, let me just read you, kind of glance through this. <laughs> Pardon me. Heavy rain may cause localized flooding later this week, depending on if we get some intense rain rates. We're just really coming down. An atmospheric river will bring abundant moisture to southwest Washington, northwest Oregon, Wednesday through Thursday. Let me pause for a second and say that in my personal opinion, the media and even the National Weather Service all of a sudden has fallen in love with the term atmospheric river. And whenever we have an elongated fetch, of some decent moisture, that term is now being thrown out a lot more often than it used to be. Technically speaking, by definition, any elongated moisture, and I'll show you what we're talking about, is an atmospheric river, but I tend to not use those terms unless we've got a period of time where we're going to be getting three, four, five, six inches of rain, and it's an absolute flooding concern. Um, but anyway, I digress. That's my, my little soapbox for the moment. All right, what else do they say here? Latest model guidance has increased the rainfall potential from one to two inches of rain expected in the interior lowlands, one half to three inches for the coast, two and a half, two to five inches in the Willow Hills Coast Range and Cascades. This is all total this Wednesday through the weekend. Heavy rain in the Cascades will likely occur between St. Helens and down to Mount Jefferson. Timing of the heavy rain again will be Wednesday night and Thursday morning. That's the first wave. And then again, Friday late in the Saturday. Again, the main concern here, potential urban flooding in poor drainage areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, let's take a look and see what the imagery is showing, shall we? All right. Uh, I think, yeah, all these are updated. Here's the visible. We haven't really had the amount of cloudiness today that I thought we would have. It's really pretty nice outside. But you can see all the clouds here building offshore on the true daytime uh, color view. Here's the visible blend. And really what we're looking at is this elongated fetch right in here. See my mouse, this elongated fetch that is taking aim at us. So this is the atmospheric river and it really shows up nicely on the water vapor. <clears throat> Pardon me. Again, just an elongated fetch of moisture taking aim at our area. And this is the way it looks on the surface map. It's not really well defined. And I do have some question if we're going to get as much rain as what the modeling is putting out, because if you look at the surface front and you do the upper level analysis, the numbers really aren't anything to write home about. What is impressive is that this does appear, let's look at the water vapor, to be a really moist batch of air. Dew points are well up into the 50s. And whenever you forecast an inch of rain in a 24-hour period, one of the first things you look for is do we have a dew point that's 50 or higher? Because you literally need that much water vapor capability in the batch of air to produce an inch of rain in a 24-hour period. Again, the higher the dew point, the more water vapor the air can hold, and therefore the more potential rainfall that you can get. Um, all right. I've been battling a little fall cold and my throat gets a little scratchy. Here's a close-up look of that one visible blend. Again, the 
fetch of moisture coming our way. Uh, I've got a couple of different looks. There's that close up of the water vapor that we already looked at. And let's look at what some modeling is showing now. So this is just going to act like a, a future cast movie, more or less. We would show you on, on, on TV. So let me go ahead and play this. This is like a future radar is another way to look at it. This is what the modeling is showing that the radar would look like tomorrow. Now, there are several models to show that we get some rain tomorrow morning. Like when we wake up tomorrow morning, it's raining at the coast. And then during the morning, that fills into the valley. This particular blended model does not show that, but there's absolutely the chance of some rain in the morning more than what this is indicating. Uh, for example, here we are at one o'clock Wednesday. I'm sorry, this is, this is in Zulu time. So this is in the early morning hours. Here we are. This would be... <clears throat> getting into mid-morning. Now we've got a little bit of rain starting to push into Newport, Corvallis, Salem starting to pick up some rain. Notice how this is going to lift north. Here we are going into the, uh, now we're into the afternoon. This would be what, 10, 7, uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Solid bit of, uh, bit of rain moving up to the north, slowly pushing east, now starting to get out into the gorge. This is not scattered. This is steady rain coverage as you can see it the yellow would be heavier rain rates now we're getting into wednesday overnight and this is going to end i think this model yeah this is the last frame this is wednesday overnight this would be right about midnight wednesday night going into thursday morning widespread rain nothing stormy here no lightning no hail just widespread rain again the yellow is the heavier rain rates and that's mostly north coast of Oregon, and then up into western Washington, as you can see. Okay, here is a, another way to look at this. This is a, this is the GFS America model, and this is going to show you, it's actually going to not project like a radar, it's going to show you potential precipitation accumulation. So here we are tomorrow, we're getting into late morning, we're starting to accumulate a little bit in the valley, two 107 inch mid-valley, just over Trace in Portland, maybe just under a tenth of an inch, eight one hundreds down the Newport area. And then I'll play this. Now we're getting into Wednesday evening into Thursday overnight. And look at this initial heavy rain band. It's as story gets caught in it and then mainly up into Washington. If this is correct, we'd have some heavier rain in Clark County, for example, than we would south of Portland. Let's go ahead and play this into uh, early Thursday morning. Look at this. This is impressive. Wow. This is an inch and a half up in the Hoquiam area of uh, the Washington coast. Um, over an inch in that story, 1.37. And potentially, you've got an inch and a half of rain around Mount St. Helens and getting into parts of Skamania County. Here's 45 and 100. That's about where Salem is. So notice south of Salem, not nearly as much. On the flip side, you've got some age rain pushing all the way out through the Columbia Basin into the Blues. Again, this is Thursday morning. Let's go ahead and play this through Thursday, this will be Thursday, 5 p.m. Again, this is a cumulative rain from one model. Absolutely loving that this is wet stuff, but keep in mind, most of the rain is going to be Wednesday evening, Wednesday overnight in terms of heavier rain. Once we get into Thursday day, we'll be behind the front and the precipitation might be more scattered. So, which leads me to think this is way overdoing amounts during the day Thursday. So really don't overly pay attention to anything right now until we get into Saturday. What I want to show you now, see, if you look in here, it's kind of filling in. This is another moisture plume that built in over the weekend. But look over the weekend, it now takes the totals up to two and even three inches along the coast, two inches in the mid-valley, shows about three inches in the Mount St. Helens area. Again, these amounts might be overdone, but you get the idea that we're absolutely, absolutely looking for a... Um, uh, a, a widespread soak. Okay, I mentioned to start this, and I'm almost done. I mentioned to start this atmospheric rivers. This is the satellite imagery product that meteorologists look at to clearly identify atmospheric rivers. We don't really do it on the water vapor. I mean, it's a helpful guide or the infrared satellite picture that I showed you earlier. It's a helpful guide, but this shows you what's called precipitable water. So it's the best thing to a radar product over a wide scale showing of the water basins. So right here, we see all the red, that's down around the equatorial areas, right? That's subtropical moisture. So what we look for, see in green and yellow up here, these little fingers, there's one, boom, look at it. These little fingers of moisture tend to spin up and here's one, boom, right there. This is that fetch of moisture. It's being identified as atmospheric river that would feed 
right into our areas. See, it's a little finger that comes up and there's a second one again of some pretty good moisture Friday night and the Saturday. So yeah, it's technically an atmospheric river, but at this point, I think it's doubtful that we get into significant flooding issues. Very possible that we get a period um, Thursday night, or excuse me, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, that we get a period maybe Friday going into Saturday where we have some heavy rain rates and all of a sudden we have some potting on area roadways and some some brief flash flooding of, of that type of nature. Here's a look at what my seven-day shows. And really, the timing of rain bands, the heaviest rain is likely going to change and get fine-tuned in the coming days. So really, all I want you to notice from the seven-day is we got the rain picking up Wednesday. We know it's going to be raining Wednesday overnight and a Thursday morning. We got another shot picking up Friday, Friday night and a Saturday. We know we have occasional rain Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. And right now it does look like we will be dry that Wednesday, Thursday following. And remember, Friday morning could be dry if you're looking for some dry periods. And the other thing I want you to notice is, especially after we're coming off of the cold nights, right? Look at the lows. Thursday morning, 53. Friday morning, 52. Saturday, 53. Sunday morning, 52. Monday, 50. Tuesday, 51. That's a sign of very moist air, which gives us the potential for some heavier rain. And it's also a sign that snow levels are going to be high. I mean, snow levels are going to be generally like closer to seven, 8,000 feet for a good chunk of this time until we get into Sunday. Sunday snow levels could come down, looking at my notes, to about 5,000 feet. That may or may not happen, but certainly in the coming days into the weekend, it's all heavy rain over Cascade Passes. It could really be coming down in the rate of inches as we talked earlier. All right, I will let you go, and uh, we'll see how much rain we pick up. Uh, starting tomorrow and then i will uh, talk to you soon with an update thanks for using my youtube channel my website's portlandweather.com i'm rod hill and i'll talk to you soon